The NASCAR Pinty Series travels west for its annual trek to the prairies. We're at Wyant Group Raceway for the first ever series doubleheader with twin 100 lap races. The championship battle heats up in Saskatoon. The NASCAR Pinty Series trophy is the pinnacle of all awards within the Canadian racing community. To hold it high, you have to muscle your way to the front. You've got to survive some tough street courses. You've got to keep your cool while in the heat of battle. And it all comes down to being there at the end. This is the toughest NASCAR short track series in North America. And the fight brings us to Saskatoon, a jewel in the heart of the prairies. Welcome to a jam of a short track. We're just north of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan for Bayer Presents Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 100s. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross. Todd Lewis is patrolling the pits for us here trackside today. But Adam, the NASCAR caravan has moved all the way across the country from the east side of Canada to the prairies, and we stop here at Wyant Group Raceway. And the race promoters and NASCAR have thrown a real twist. It's going to be twin 100 lap features today. Two complete 100 lap races separated by a local late model event. These teams are going to be busy, but is it going to be entertaining? Well, this place is so racy. NASCAR really couldn't have picked a better place to do it. No, they couldn't. This third mile semi-banked racetrack is ultra competitive. The drivers love it. It's a racer's racetrack. There's two and a half usable grooves and a super fan base come from Saskatoon to support this event. Something we haven't seen in the series so far in its existence, but the owners here at Wyant Group Raceway have been busy in the off season. There used to be a bump going into turn number one. They used to upset the cars, especially in the braking zone. That is now gone. They dug up the track, repaired that bump, and repaved and now it's super smooth going into turn number one but this stop on the schedule marks the halfway point of the 2017 NASCAR Pinty series and it's been a dynamic series so far to date five races on different tra tracks and all have proven with different results well we started the season at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park it was a race that started in the rain, turned into sunshine, ended in wet conditions, and what an exciting finish. Kevin Lacroix took center stage at CTMP. And it was Delaware Speedway near London, Ontario that hosted race number two, the Fast Eddie 250. Points leader Kevin Lacroix had his bumper-to-bumper -bumper dodge on rails for that entire event, but attrition played a role late in the going, and it was the 32 of Alex LeBay who powered his way to the front and his first win of the season. The series then moved to Quebec for a 300 lap event at Autodrome Chaudière. The fast quarter mile oval didn't disappoint. It was the 2016 defending champion Caden Lapsevich who drove his number 76 Dodge to a win and put the youngster back into title contention. Brand new layout at Circuit Icar was on tap for round number four and a strong field attacked the aggressive new short track road course. Everyone had their elbows out and were looking in their mirrors and it was local NASCAR star and he doubt Kevin Lacroix outlasted regained control of the points race. And then last week the tour went to its first street course, third road course of the season. The Toronto circuit can be fast, challenging, and unforgivable for some. Kevin Lacroix outlasted Cameron and LP Dumoulin to take his third win of the season. Lacroix's winning ways along with consistency have him on top of the Pinty Series point standings. Alex LeBay, though, a solid second spot, and then LP Dumoulin in the top three. And the Western Swing has always been a point in the season when drivers really start to focus on the championship battle. You can bet with twin features tonight, this will definitely affect the outcome of the championship race. One driver who tasted victory here in Saskatoon just one year ago en route to his championship, if you remember that one, was Caden Lapsevich. Caden's quick today. He's standing by with our Todd Lewis. Todd? Thanks, Dave. Caden Lapsevich will roll off fifth tonight for race number one. You've been a busy guy before getting out here to Saskatoon, down in Charlotte, getting ready for the NASCAR Next program. What are some of the things you've been involved in? Uh, you know, we got to go down to Joey Gano's shop on Monday, and, uh, you know, he gave us a little bit of tour there, got to see some of his toys and stuff. Uh, you know, he gave, a, gave us a talk about, you know, just selling sponsorship and stuff, you know, proper, how to do it properly. And then, uh, you know, Tuesday we had some more seminars and, you know, they just, they go over the small things that really do matter, like proper formatting of the email and, 
you know, building that relationship and stuff. So, uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun. I'm really excited to see what it brings. And, uh, you know, I, I'm excited to go down there again because I know we got more seminars and I can learn even more. Lots of information is a good thing. Now, I know that Saskatchewan and Saskatoon here is also special for you. This was the site of your first win, really kickstarted you onto the championship last year. What's the secret to success here? Well, it was that bump, getting over that bump really good, but they took that out. So, uh, you know, it. it's different than it was last year, but at the same time, it's still the same. You know, the from there on, it's the same old track, you know, it was just about getting over that bump. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit easier now that the bump's not there. It, it really didn't change our times a whole lot, which sort of surprised me. But, um, you know, I think we'll be all right. You're just going to have to save for the first 50 and try and put another late push on at the end there. And, um, you know, save a car for the second race and, um, you know, try and go win that one too. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Caden Lapsevich, champion and former Rookie of the Year, competing in the Jostens Rookie of the Year this year. The leader is Adam Martin, who will roll off 12 tonight. What have you learned about this great track here in Saskatoon so far? So far, it's been good. We've been able to uh, really have a good time here, and hopefully it'll be good tonight. What's your approach to the Rookie of the Year championship as well? That's a year-long battle. Yeah, so far we haven't had a whole lot of luck in that department so hopefully the second half of the season here we'll be able to turn our luck around a little bit and uh, have a good finish two chances at it tonight for adam martin and the rest of the competitors we'll get the green flag in saskatoon when we come back the velocity prairie thunder twin 100s from saskatoon is brought to you by mopar we built it we know it my E3 spark plugs, born to burn. Spectra Premium, automotive parts developed and engineered in Canada. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. 20 drivers from five different provinces and one state all strapped in, ready to go here at White Group Raceway. Earlier today, they took to the track for time trials, and it was the number 74 of Kevin Lacroix took the E3 Spark Plug Pole Award in a time of 14.645 seconds. That was early today, Dave. The crowd has really filled in since then. A great look at the bumper-to-bumper -bumper 74 of Lacroix completing his qualifying run. And there he is getting some final preparation strapped into the car, making sure communications are up and running and as we said the crowd filling in very nicely number of new faces competing for the first time in the series including that man luke hocus from the paw manitoba as a matter of fact six drivers competing in tonight's races from western canada noel dowler jason hankowich uh, hocus admiral and the father-daughter team of steph and destiny klim from moose jaw saskatchewan now let's go trackside to cal Haddo from bear drivers start your engines The engines fire on the front straightaway here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. There you see starting on the outside of the front row, the number 32 of Alex LeBay. He's got a win already this season. Looking for race win number two here today. We'll ride on board with the number 83 of Ian Admiral, amongst others. Donald Teej going to drive the 22 machine prepared by Scott Steckley Racing. He is lightning quick on the ovals. And there's a look at defending champion Caden Lapsevich. You see a lot of the teams or a lot of the drivers checking their steering wheel. That's one of the things they do before they roll off from their starting spot here on the front stretch. That's actually one of their signals to NASCAR officials to say they're ready to go. They pull down on the belts and back on the wheel. Take a look at your clean flow starting lineup. As we mentioned, Lacroix on pole, LeBay starting to the outside. DJ Kennington to the inside of row number two and Donald Teague in the 22. Starting fifth is Caden Lapsevich alongside Gary Clute in the Canadian Pool Supplies number 59. Row number four, Andrew Ranger in the Mopar 27, and Alex Tagliani in the EpiPen 18. Looking back to row number five, LP Dumoulin has been successful here in the past. He'll start alongside Noel Dowler in the five. And row six has Mark Dilley in the 02, Adam Martin, teammates, row number six. Into the seventh row, it's Luke Hocus in the 10 machine, and Anthony Simone in the Innovative Plumbing 95. Row number eight, Ian Admiral, alongside Jean-Francois Dumoulin in the Spectra Premium 04. Row number nine, the Chevrolet of Jason Hankowicz in the 25, and Armani Williams back behind the wheel of the 28. Stefan Klim in the 54, and Destiny Klim, his daughter, in the 55. That rounds out tonight's starting field, and what a great field it is. Fantastic field out here. Now let's have a look at the E3 Sparkplugs race analysis. It's 100 laps here tonight. 
and a third of a mile, but it's a spacious third of a mile. It, it races like a much bigger track in that you've got a lot of room. The outside lane is very wide. Now with the close competitive nature of these cars, they'll make it look pretty snug. It's a beautiful day here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, but it is very warm. And remember, this is the first of two 100 lap events. Before we get things started, let's send it back down trackside to talk. Todd? Just before we go green in this first 100 lapper, guys, Noel Dowler is the top qualifying Western driver. He participated with us at race number two of the season in Delaware, back closer to home in Alberta here at Wine Group Raceway, and called in a little help from the south. Rick Crawford, a veteran of the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, a five-time winner, is up in the spotter stand. He said to me earlier, I'm just trying to keep him close, and they're hoping to have some pretty good success tonight. Noel was fast in practice, should be again tonight in the races. And listening to that combination in practice earlier on tonight, Rick Crawford doing a great job coaching Noel Dowler. And Dowler picked up speed every single session. He looks really good in practice, but now is when it counts, Dave. The field bunching up into corner number four as we prepare to get things underway in the first of two 100 lap events. Cal Addo from Bear Crop Science with the green, and we're underway in Saskatoon. On our way to making history, Dave, twin 100 lap features, lap one of race one right now. This is the beauty of Wyatt Group Raceway. You can see the side-by-side -side racing all the way through the field. Kevin Lacroix noses into the lead in the early on. There is plenty of room, and now we have to wonder what sort of strategy the points racers employ here, Dave. You have to have something to race in the second 100, but these guys are fierce competitors. They want to win the first 100 as well. Well, you look at the number 22 of Donald Teague. He is really loose up on the outside as this track has been baking in the hot sun all day long. Battling with the 59 there, Gary Clute for fifth spot. Well, these tires will just now be coming up to temperature. They'll be starting to get the performance out of the Goodyear Eagles. There's a unique look of Gary Clute's Pioneer Pools, number 59. And look at Clute get crossways as he gets on the gas coming out of turn number four, and they lean on each other in through one and two. Lurking just in behind the 76 of Caden Lapsovich. Remember how good he was here last year. He was so fast. And you can see right now, all he's looking to do is capitalize. If Gary Clute can seal the deal and make the pass on Donald Teach, Lapsovich wants to make sure that Teach can't get back to the bottom. Now, what's interesting about that 59 car, that is not the car that Gary Clute normally drives. There's a story there. That is the backup car for DJ Kennington. As we said, we're making history here tonight, twin 100 lap features. So these teams, some of them have backup cars, and if they run into problems in the first 100 laps, they will go to a backup car in the second 100 laps. So Gary Clute, should DJ have a problem in this race, Gary Clute will not be driving that 59 <laughs> in the second race. The letters, the stickers will be peeled off that race car. It will look very much like the Castrol Edge 17, as that's DJ's insurance. There you see a side-by-side -side battle for the lead. Alex LeVay on the inside of the Can-Am Ford Fusion. He is tucked alongside the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Lacroix still hanging on up on the outside. You remember, the 74 has never won an oval race in the NASCAR Pinty Series. No, and we used to call him a road course specialist who's learning his way on ovals. I think he's learned his way, Dave. He's putting up a battle with one of the best stock car racers in North America. And we got problems. You could hear it as the 54 of Stefan Klin goes around and is in turn number one, and that'll draw the first caution of the evening here in Saskatoon. Noel Dowler almost got a piece of that trying to get slowed down. No doubt Rick Crawford helped with that. Well, Klim had to jump on the brakes there to stop that car from rolling backwards. Let's take another look at what happened. It'll be at the top of your screen. Yep, under braking into the corner. He was a little bit high. Thank goodness he got on the brakes to prevent that car from rolling back across. Interesting here, pit road is open and it looks like we have one taker. Mark Dilley is coming down. He was struggling with handling in the early going. Todd? 0-2 taking advantage of this early caution. A significant handling adjustment to the right rear. They're also checking air pressure on the left and I think looks like guys pulling out a spring rubber as well. Well, they can't change tires unless a tire is flat, so they have to play with the hand that has been dealt to them. But in the early going here in Saskatoon, Kevin Lacroix leads under caution. Restart number one. 
one here in Saskatoon for the sixth race of the 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series. Kevin Lacroix leads in his bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge, and he's been there since the drop of the green. So Lacroix fires first in the restart area. That's right where they are now. A huge advantage, and you can see the jump he got. LeBay trying to time it to race him down into turn one, but a big advantage getting to fire first. the speed shots we have here around Saskatoon. Look at LeBay swing way outside to try and keep up that momentum in the high lane, and he is making that Ford work out there. Caution again, Pankowicz and Admiral both around. Wow, right in front of Kevin Lacroix, Ian Admiral drives up onto the racetrack. Hankowitz with some cosmetic damage on the front of that 25 machine. Yeah, you can see the hood flapping in the breeze. That all happened in turn number four. And we'll have another look at how it all went down. Well, there was definitely some contact there as we're riding with Ian Admiral. And again, back down into the pits is the 0-2 of Mark Dilley. And now Hankowicz is going to get the hood repaired on that number 25. They should be able to get that done. It didn't look like anything was dragging or leaking out of the car. Those are the big issues, Dave. But now we'll see, can Alex LeBay take what he learned in that first restart and use it here on restart number two as the pace car pulls down pit lane. It's a carbon copy of what we just went through. We got Kevin Laquan down low on the inside. We got Alex LeBay up high, and we got the green flag back up in the air. And Alex LeBay is trying to use all the racetrack, but when he comes down into the corner, he's got to try and pin down the 74 of Lacroix. Nowhere near close enough on this restart. Kevin Lacroix grabs the lead. Just 25 laps in the books. It'll be 26 when they cross the line this time. And Lacroix clearing the 32 on the front straightaway. How about DJ Kennington in the Castrol Edge number 17 running third? This is as strong as we've seen him run in a long time, Dave. He looks great today. Remember, he hasn't had a win since way back in 2013. Now Alex LeBay to the inside of Lacroix. Oh, Lacroix slipped up the racetrack just a little bit. Here comes the cap of Ford. The 32 of Alex LeBay to the inside. They'll drive race down the front chute. And now Lacroix will do the same thing to LeBay that LeBay was trying to do with him. And that's get the 74 right at his driver's door, right at the right front corner of the LeBay 32. And it kind of pins Alex LeBay, and he can't accelerate as quickly as he'd like to. Good battle, a little deeper in the field. This one for seventh position between the five of Noel Dowler, the 18 of Alex Tagliani, but back up at the front, look at this. These two drivers just won't quit, and what we're seeing is the product of a 100-lap feature event. Normally our races are 200 laps, 300 laps. There's only 100 laps to get it done, so I don't think we're gonna see drivers give up any positions. You can see a stark, empty hood on the 76 as Alex LeBay continues his move to the inside of the 74, but Lapsovich still looking for support to complete the 2017 season here. I can't believe that hood is still empty on the 76. Hopefully they find some partnership. They need that engine freshened up. They run the same engine every week. It needs to be refreshed, but they're too busy racing for a championship. They do have some help from Jim Bray and Brian Cathcart, Robbie Thompson, also a partner in that team. And Caden Lapsovich is doing very, very well in that equipment once again here at this stop. He's running fourth as Alex LeBay now noses into the lead underneath the 74. Here comes DJ Kennington. He'll follow through. One or two feet at a time, he's gaining that position. And like I say, Dave, in a long race like we're used to, they would concede these positions right now, wait till they can make some adjustments, and then go back and attack. With a 100-lap feature event, you can't afford to give up an inch. No, it's go time right from the drop of the green flag. And look at DJ Kennington. Whoa, he touched the 74. DJ Kennington, now a NASCAR Cup Series driver as well after making a few starts here in 2017 in the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series. We've got a variety of drivers making stops in the upper echelon of NASCAR, including our race leader, Alex LeBay, who started in the NASCAR Xfinity Series as well. We've got Xfinity Series drivers. We've got Cup Series drivers. 
truck racing drivers, IndyCar drivers. These are top-notch competitors here in the Pinty Series. Speaking of one of the drivers going to make a start in the Cup Series, the 59 of Gary Clute announcing just this week he will try to start at Watkins Glen in the Premium Motorsports number 15. How exciting is that for Gary Clute and the Clute family? The one thing we know about Gary, he'll walk in there with confidence. Oh, he will add a big smile on his face. I don't ever think I've seen him angry. You know, another interesting story about Gary Clute, he has recently started to race on dirt. And that's so challenging to go from asphalt to dirt or dirt to asphalt. And here's a young lady, Destiny Clem in the 55. She has only ever raced on dirt. And Gary Clute has been trying to give her some guidance on how to race on asphalt. Oh, my goodness, Caden Latsmich around with Destiny Clem in the 55. Tagged by the 55 was the 76. Caution is out as Destiny Clem comes to a rest on the track. Caden Lapsovich was able to get going, and that's important because he stays on the lead lap. He's lost about 10 positions or so on the racetrack. Let's have another look. We could hear the contact from a lap car. You want to see them stay on the bottom of the racetrack to go down into three. Oh, she just wiggled just a little bit. Boy, oh boy. You almost need to give a lap car, especially a true blue rookie like Destiny Klim, a little bit more room than Lapsovich did there. Thankfully, the car wasn't damaged too badly, Dave. Let's see if he's able to recover on the other side of this break. Welcome back to NASCAR Pinty Series Racing on TSN. We're at Saskatoon for the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 100s presented by Bear. Spotters standing tall over this gem of a racetrack here on a beautiful evening. And Dave, this is a community collective run speedway. And this group led by Brian Swidrovich is a hard working bunch to develop this third mile oval into one of the nicest facilities in North America. And as you mentioned off the top of the show, the fans have embraced NASCAR here in Saskatchewan. They've come out in droves, and they're witnessing a dandy of a race so far as Alex LeBay back into the nearing the halfway point of this first 100-lap race. Some amazing sights and sounds from Wyatt Group Raceway as LeBay leads the way over DJ Kennington. You can see Caden Lapsovich trying to work his way back towards the front. He does not have a lot of time. How about the number 22 of Donald Teague? Haven't seen too much of him so far in this race, but he's been quick all day through practice and qualifying. That 22 car is fast, and his car owner, Scott, Scott Steckley, has been victorious here in the past. That car always runs well here, and Donald Teague is a veteran stock car racer. He knows how to get it done. See, Andrew Ranger in the Mopar Dodge up on the outside as we ride on board with him. They are two by two, two rows deep, tackling any and Clute side by side. LP Dumlin, I was going to say a Ranger, but now it's Caden Lapsovich and Ranger side by side racing for ninth. Now nose to tail at the front of the field. You saw a little wiggle out of the 32 of Alex LeBay and the 17 Castro led staunch of DJ Kennington able to pin it down to the inside. Side by side, door handle to door handle, DJ Kennington as we have a little bit of contact there between Dumoulin and Clute. Kennington looking for his first win since 2013. And the driver of the WeatherTech, number 47, LP Dumoulin, has been successful here in the past, but he's searching for his first win since 2014. Yeah, LP Dumoulin definitely would love to get into victory lane. Wow, Kennington slides up out of the corner, almost makes contact with LeBay. I don't think they touched. Talking with DJ Kennington at our last stop in Toronto in the paddock area, I said, how eager are you to get away from these road courses and get back on the ovals? He said, that's what I love. I just want to be there, and he thinks he can be competitive. He's proving it here today in the Castro Edge Dodge. No doubt about it, but look at how close these two are racing. One of these guys will make a lot of contact through turn four. One of these drivers will make up a foot. The other one comes back to the next corner and gets it back and then some. That's the beauty of this track, a full-on two-groove racetrack. As Alex LeBay now 11 hundredths of a second back at the line that last time by, that's not much. I don't remember ever seeing racers drive this hard, this 
well, this early or this late, with only 100 laps, I just have never seen racing like this in this format, Dave. They have no notes to fall back on. They can't look back on last year and say, well, what did we do at this point in the race? The drivers know they have to go because laps are ticking off as they come up on the 95 of Anthony Simone, currently sitting in 18th position. One lap down, and the leaders touch. Kennington trying to close the door on LeMay to get to the inside. Simone, they... I don't know what's wrong with the 95 car, but he definitely lost ground. Heads up move. He got up and out of the way as LeBay continues to bang on the back bumper of the 17. Looking in behind, though, the number five of Noel Dowler now up in third as he works along the outside of the lap traffic. And DJ Kennington also almost went around on the right front corner of Destiny Clem's bumper. Noel Dowler is not only in third, he's closing in on the leaders. That number five car, one of the quickest cars on the track, the MFP backed Dodge Challenger, again with Rick Crawford in his pit. Noel Dowler is on fire. We ride on board Armani Williams, and look at the traffic jam ahead of him, Dave. So, Armani Williams, you want to learn how to race NASCAR in Canada? Here's the deep end of the pool. No kidding. There is no baby steps to be had here. It is crowded in that Canada's best racing team entry, driving the number 28. Look at this, Kevin LaCroix way up the outside. Lapsovich all the way to the inside. Boy, Lapsovich is grabbing a whole handful of wheel. You saw almost contact there between the 47 of Dumoulin and the 59 of Gary Clute as well. 35 laps remain, and we're under yellow. The 83 of Hankowitz goes around oh, on the front straightaway. Big contact. Damage big. to the 18 of Alex Tagliani, big time, as he got into the back of the 22 of Donald T. Down pit road, bring it down pit road right away. The rat's out of it. That's Tyler Case in the 18 saying, bring it down pit road. The rat is out of this race car. There is heavy damage. Let's have another look. So there goes the 83, and watch what happens here. So Admiral goes around, and he's trying to get pointed in the right direction. He actually drives the opposite way on the racetrack. And you can see Tagliani did not slow down, and everybody else did. And the 22 car was right in front of the 18. You see damage to the front and the rear. That's where Tagliani got hard into. And the car now behind the wall, big damage, and it'll be a long repair. Todd? Yeah, guys, it's been a long day for this 18 bunch already. Struggles during practice. They threw a bunch of things at it during qualifying. Felt they got a little better. They were almost using this first 100 lapper as an assessment to try to see where they are. Now they've sustained this damage. There's a lot of work that's going to have to be done before race number two. But this team has battled from behind before. Expect them to do it again. See a lot of bent-up metal in the front end of that race car. They'll need a new Spectra Premium Radiator in the front of that one as well. But this man will be smiling right now, DJ Kennington, sitting at the front of the pack, having a great run here in race number one of the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 100s at Wyatt Group Raceway. We continue under caution here in Saskatoon. One team with troubles in the early going, the Lowe's EpiPen team of Alex Tagliani. The one thing all these teams wanted to avoid is exactly what happened to Alex Tagliani in this race. Todd Lewis is down with the team. This 18 team is assessing the damage. Crew Chief Tyler Case, you've had a chance to survey. How does it look and can you be ready for race number two? We'll be right, ready for race number two. Uh, this crew is really good crew. Uh, I'd like to thank Lowe's and EpiPen for helping us out here. We'll be ready for two. I think we're done for one, though. Thanks, Tyler. Team owner Scott Steckley looking over there as the team prepares to go to work on that race car, but we're bunching the field, getting ready for the restart. Dave, we're setting up for a short track shootout, just the way DJ Kennington in the 17 and Alex LeMay in the 32 both cut their teeth. The restart coming on lap 74, Kennington LeBay. Look at Noel Dowler in the five, having a great run here this evening. He'll start alongside Donald Teague, and we're back underway. Noel Dowler trying to stay right on the back bumper of DJ Kennington. Kennington slides that car to turn two. Side by side all the way back as LeBay steps the back end out. Fusion. Kennington coming back on the inside. And look at neither Noel Tower or Donald T giving an inch in that battle for third. They need to be there to capitalize regardless of what happens with the leaders, Dave. I love this shot as you look back 
at Alex LeBay in his office. Kennington having to gingerly get on the throttle. Alex LeBay can more smoothly get on the throttle on the outside and carry that momentum. And right now, it's carried him to the lead. A lot of these drivers were complaining of a very loose race car because of the temperature of the track here in race number one and a lack of pit stops, too. You can't really make changes. But Caden Lapsovich, one of the quickest cars on the track right now, is coming back up through the field. Yeah, Noel Dower in the five looks to be sliding backwards, and that's played into the hand of Caden Lapsovich, who is back in the top five. He didn't get shuffled back even further, except that he's got the intestinal fortitude to keep his foot in it, Dave. Everybody could have had big troubles there, including Caden Lapsovich. He came out well out in front, so he's sitting in fourth spot. Now he has to chase the top three. We've been able to open up a gap on the rest of the field, but the big loser there is the MFP number five of Noel Dowler. And trouble for the 95 of Anthony Simone. He's dealing with a flat tire as we go on board with Mark Dilley. Contact between the 0-2 and I believe the 10 of Luke Hocus. See side by side there, the 47 of LP Jubilee, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. It's a battle for six spot. Side by side, Lacroix up on the outside, LP Dumoulin. That car looks clean. He has kept that car out of trouble this entire race. But he's got to get up on the wheel. Kevin Lacroix does a great job on the high side. Good look at the field as they start to string out now. 16 laps to go that time by. It's hard to believe we're already at 16 to go, but that's how quickly these 100-lap races go by. Battling with the 17 of DJ Kennington. And he has not hit the 
his 17 at Cannington. He's tickled him a couple of times, <laughs> but he hasn't really gouged him to move him up the racetrack. He's still got four and a half laps to make that happen, Dave. A lot of respect between those two drivers here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Alex LeBay in the Can-Am Kappa. Ford Fusion continues to lead. Lapsovich now on the back bumper of the 22. Donald Teague, you better be careful because here comes the youngster. Lapsovich is getting a great drive off the corner. I've noticed Teague the last few laps. Can't get the power down. That car is sliding up the racetrack. Caution is out. And that is for the 25 of Hankowitz. Went around in turn number two. What did I say five minutes ago? We were talking about L.P. Dumoulin, who had won a race here with a green-white checkered. It wouldn't surprise me if another green-white checkered happened today. And oh, the Can-Am crew, Mario Goslin, the crew chief on the pit box, does not like what he sees. Of course they didn't want to see that because now it's a side-by-side -side restart. Armani Williams in the race for autism number 28 will try to pick up some more spots as well, as will Adam Martin in the Johnsville number nine. It'll be Alex LeBay on the inside. DJ Kennington upstairs. The car that was coming was the 76 of Caden Lapsovich. Donald Teague has had time to cool down his tires. A green white checker here in the first of two 100 lap races, and we're in overtime. NASCAR overtime. LeBay with a great start. DJ Kennington trying to challenge, but also trying to get in line. He'll do so now. The battle is for third. Kennington's close enough to move him. He gives him a little nudge in turn number four, but LeBay maintains the one more lap to go. Kennington got loose going into turn one. That gives LeBay some breathing room. There goes Lapsovich to the outside. On the outside, he'll take over third battle for the final top box spot on the fourth. Alex LeBay will take the win, followed home by Kennington, and Kate Lapsovich will seal third. What a race. That was the first 100 lapper, Dave. We've still got 100 more laps to go. And let's head down to Todd with the winning crew chief. Todd? You were a little worried when you saw that yeah, yellow flag come out, went into overtime, but your driver held on. Yeah, I mean, you know, Alex did a hell of a job. Can-Am car was good. Want to make it a little bit better for the second half, a little too tight in the center, but, you know, when you got a two-car lead and it's two to go, you always hate to see a caution come out. I just don't ever know what's going to happen. I mean, I know DJ. Lucky is DJ. He's a clean driver, you know what I mean? But I felt like maybe on a restart he might be a little bit better than us for a couple laps, but Alex did a hell of a job. And, Get ready for the second one, make it better. Go celebrate the first one. And Mario Gosselin with an accent that's a mix of French, Canadian, and deep southern U.S. Well, Mario Gosselin has been all over North America with success as a crew chief and as a race car driver doing great things with this race team. Todd Lewis is down trackside to celebrate. Once again, Alex Lave climbs out of that number 32. A winner in the first half of this doubleheader tonight. Boy, you had a real challenge there at the end, but you held him off. Yeah, for sure. DJ White had a pretty strong car tonight. Well, the 22 was pretty fast. I mean, we, our Canon team did an awesome job. We had a really fast car. They don't want to see that, that caution. There were two to go. But, I mean, we gave it all, all we had on that last restart and had a, an awesome restart. Can't thanks my guys enough. Alex LaVey is your winner in race number one, and oh boy, does that impact the points as we get set for race number two. There's team over Alan Manoir coming over to give him a big hug, and there's the final results. One Ford at the top, and all the rest are Dodges. Points leader Kevin Lacroix back in the eighth spot, so it's a good points day for Caden Lapsovich and Alex LaVey as they both finished ahead of Lacroix. A guy who finished second is with Todd right now. DJ Kennington, really strong run. That car was comfortable up front. Just missed it by a little bit. How will you change for the second race? Uh, we got a couple of little adjustments we got to make, Todd. I mean, the Castro Edge Dodge was really good. Just lost the center of the corner there a little bit, about lap 75. And uh, if we can get that thing rotating the center just a little bit better, I think uh, we got something for him in the second 100. Should be fun to watch. So that's the thing. The second 100 is set to come up. You see the 18 crew working on the car, driven by Alex Tagliani. The podium here after race number one. The win goes to Alex LeBay. Cal Otto presents the trophy for race number one. Find out who's going to win race number two right after this. Welcome back to NASCAR Racing on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross. Todd Lewis is in the pits. We'll check in with him in just a minute. But the first part of the Twin 100s in the books, and it was exciting. Uh, what can you say about that? 
We thought we might see these teams take it a little bit easy, knowing they have another 100 lap race to run. They did exactly the opposite of that, Dave. The local late model show is out on the track right now. If you hear the noise, that's what's running as we prepare for the second half of the Bear Presents Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 100s. But Adam, during this stoppage, what exactly can the teams do? Dave, the teams can do anything they can accomplish in this amount of time. The engines are sealed, the carburetors are sealed. Anything in the powertrain, they pretty much can't touch. But beyond that, they're all going to put on fresh Goodyear tires. They can change springs, shocks, sway bars, suspension setups. They can do a lot of things. And with the sun starting to go down, they might want to make those changes. And in an interesting way, we're setting the lineup for race number two as well. We haven't seen the starting lineup. They're still working that out because they're taking the fastest lap, the fastest single lap for every car in that first 100 lap race. And that's how they'll determine the lineup for the second race. Last I checked, DJ Kennington in the 17 had that fastest lap. Well, you mentioned some of the changes that are being made, some repairs being made down in the pits as well. Let's head down there and check in with Todd Lewis. Todd? Thanks, guys. Spoke with a number of teams as to what they plan to do for race number two. Most of them a little bit loose getting in. Some of them in the center a little bit tough. The biggest change, the 47 has changed ignition boxes. And, of course, the work continues on the 18 for Alex Tagliani. Just got the update from Crew Chief Tyler Case. They have replaced the radiator. They've replaced a bunch of hoses. The oil lines, they are going to weld on a makeshift bumper. He assures me it might not look pretty, but they will be ready for race number two. Our fifth place finisher in race number one, Gary Clute. Smile on your face, pretty satisfying run. Tell me about how hot it was out there, too. It was warm. Um, you know, I can't thank the Pool Supplies Canada guys enough for getting me out here. It's my, you know, one of my favorite oval tracks of the year. Love that we're doing twin 100s out here. We got hung out on the outside for three restarts in a row, but finally got back to the bottom and drove back up to fifth. So excited for race number two. We're starting on the outside of the front row. Looking forward to seeing you battle in race number two. We'll be set for the green flag in that next 100 lapper when we come back to Saskatoon. Welcome back to NASCAR Pinty Series Racing on TSN. The engines have been fired for race number two of the Bear Presents Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 100s. You can see the lineup on track, and that is a lineup as a result of their speed in the first race. And Dave, one of these things is not like the others. <laughs> Alex Tagliani, all of the body work from the firewall forward has been removed from that race car, but because he had the eighth quickest lap in the first 100 lap race, he gets to start eighth. And we'll take a look at the rest of the E3 Spark Plug starting lineup. DJ Kennington on pole. He'll have Gary Clute to the outside. Then there's Kevin Lacroix on the 74. Alex LeBay, race number one winner, will start in fourth. Rounding out the top five, Caden Lapsovich alongside Donald Teach in the 22. In the fourth row, it's Anthony Simone in the 95 and the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Looking back to row number five, that's where we find LP Dumoulin starting alongside Noel Dowler in the number five pair of Dodges. Row number six is Andrew Ranger, not feeling so hot today in the 27, JF Dumoulin in the 04. Row number seven has Ian Admiral in the 83 alongside Mark Dilley in the 02. And in the eighth row, it's Luke Hocus in the 10 machine and Adam Martin in the nine. Row number nine is Jason. Jason Hankowicz in the 25, Armani Williams drives the number 28, and the final starting row here tonight, the 54 of Stefan Klim and Destiny Klim in the 55. So that's how they'll line up for this second 100 lap race. Dave, it's, it's another race. It's as if we have left, gone to the next show a week down the road, but it's all in the same night, the second 100 lap. How about some of the youngsters here tonight, Armani Williams and Adam Martin in the number nine, also doing very well tonight. Let's check in one more time with Todd. Todd? A couple of cars we're going to watch for, guys, as we get this second 100 lapper started. The 27 of Andrew Ranger, the Mopar Parts car, had really loose condition right from the start of the race number one. They found that one of their tires grew a little more than expected, couldn't get on the gas. The 0-2 of Mark Gilly, on the other hand, super, super tight right from the get-go. They think they've loosened that car up. Conditions have changed a little bit. We'll be looking for both of them to move forward as this race moves along. 
course, the 27 of Andrew Ranger, the only driver in the field running the Mopar M1 engine, a lot lighter than the old Mopar built engines that they ran last year. They've still got to get that car to handle well, and that's what was missing in that first 100. I'm sure David White made an adjustment. Hopefully, Ranger will be a little quicker as we begin the second 100 lap event. Green flag is out and a big jump from the 17 of DJ Kennington into turn one. Wow, Gary Clute did not get a great start, but look at Kevin LaCroix. Clute will slot down to the inside. Now he found a hole, so he'll fall into third. LeBay still way up on the outside alongside the 76 of Kate Lapsevich. LeBay giving everyone a lot of room. We're in the early going here, just lap two of this 100 lap event. But as we say that, he makes a move on Gary Clute just as Gary Clute gets loose in turn number four. Oh, he had to chase that car way up the racetrack, and the loser there was LeBay, who was on the outside, who checked up because he tried to avoid the Pool Supplies Canada number 59 of Clute. And obviously, DJ Kennington had a great race in the first 100. That means Gary Clute gets to keep his ride in the second 100. And Adam, we talked about how hard these drivers went in the first 100 lap race here today. How hard is it for them to back off a little bit and maybe save their cars for the first 50 of this one? Uh, you know, I think there's a little bit of backing off, but by and large, they've got to be up on the wheel. I mean, we just looked out the back of LeBay's car at Alex Tagliani, the inner workings at the front end of the 18. He's up on the wheel right in the thick of this battle. Board, the bumper to bumper number 74 of Kevin Lacroix as he chases DJ Kennington. Watch the nose of that car slam down onto the ground going into the corner. Gets pinned to the racetrack all the way around until they get on the gas and come off. There's Alex Tagli and he looks more like a modified here in race number two. No body work on the front end of that Lowe's EpiPen Dodge, but the car is working well, and that's the important part. He sits in ninth spot chasing the MFP sponsored number five of Noel Dowler. And just in front of Noel Dowler, the innovative plumbing 95 of Anthony Simone having a great run as well. Quick ride on board the Johnsonville Ford Fusion of Adam Martin. Boy, that car looked a little bit angry on Martin as he got loose coming up off the turn. DJ Kennington leads the way. The top four have driven away just a little bit from the field. Kennington, Lacroix in the 74, the 59 of Clute, and this young man, Caden Lapsovich. This is a big difference from race one to race two. This one is a lot more single file racing. Remember back in race number one, everybody was side by side for the first 10 laps or so. This one has started to stretch out a little bit and they all have brand new tires, so that shouldn't be an issue. Well, this race lined up by their fastest lap in race number one, not based on a two lap time trial. So that could be the difference that we're seeing, Dave. On board the Mopar number 27 of Andrew Ranger. Car seems to be working a lot better here this time around. A noticeably different sound from the M1 spec engine compared to some of the other engines we hear in these onboards. There you see a look at the Leland 02 of Mark Dilley and Byron Nelson from Leland Industries has a large group of people here cheering on Mark Dilley in the 02 today. So we'd like to say a big hello to Byron Nelson and crew. This is as close as we come to his hometown of Wadena. So he always puts on a big party out here in Saskatchewan. slowly getting back on the gas and he seems to be just a little bit quicker than the 74 of Kevin Lacroix but you have to be a lot quicker to make a clean move here at Wyatt Group Raceway. Yeah you make a great point Dave it's a long way to go to the outside and make a pass to go to the inside we saw it in that first hundred laps you might pick up a foot on a car every lap it can take you 10 laps to complete a pass that's if you don't make a mistake. Donald Teach in the 22 they're battling with the 32 of Alex LeBay that is for fourth spot is sorry sorry fifth spot and DJ Kennington is out quite a bit on the rest of the pack now. Just trying to tickle that throttle enough to get the nose to the inside of the 74. He has not been able to do so just yet. And you can see a car just ahead of the race leader. It appears to be the 28 of Armani Williams. So he's the leader, I should say. is getting into lap traffic, but not quite catching him just yet. 
So DJ Kennington, the class of the field, he's got a little bit of a buffer back to the rest of the pack, but this now a battle for seventh spot, and Anthony Simone in the number 95 having a whale of a race going down the spot now to the five of Noel Dowler. And Noel Dowler, we overheard some of the spotter conversation with Noel and Trump. Wow, that was a close call with the 18 attack of the ante just in front of his radiator. Noel Dowler spotter Rick Crawford, a truck series winner. He really has been coaching Noel on exactly what to do on these restarts, on these long runs. That's got to be a huge confidence boost to Noel Dowler. And calming him down. It's a nice calming voice on the radio for the youngster, Noel Dowler. Everybody knows Noel Dowler is a fast race car driver. What he lacks is the ability to string together a complete race. I mean, he's had a number of top five finishes in the NASCAR PT Series. As there we look at a battle between Nick or Luke Hocus in the 10 car, the 0-2. A Mark Dillian caution out once again. Destiny Clem goes around, everybody able to avoid. Stefan Clem will go down into the grass on the inside. We should mention too that battle between the 02 and the 10 was for 13th spot. But we'll reset the lineup as we're under caution with 28 laps already in the books. We're on board with Armani Williams who had just been lapped by DJ Kennington. We'll come back for the restart of Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 100s right after this. Welcome back to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, as the sun starts to set on Wyant Group Raceway. We're into race number two of Bayer Presents, the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 100s. DJ Kennington, your race leader, as we head back to green. Kennington, the veteran stock car racer with Kevin Lacroix, our points leader on the outside. Kennington with a great jump out of turn number four. 33 laps completed of a scheduled 100, and Lacroix holding tight up on the outside. That outside groove has been fairly non-existent here in race number two. And we haven't talked about it today, but we talked about different spotters, different crew chiefs. How many times did we see DJ Kennington battle with Don Thompson Jr.? That's the crew chief on the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, and you can really see the way this car handles is what we saw to Don Thompson Jr. year after year. And the 74 wasn't quick when they first unloaded here in Saskatoon. They worked on it on practice. They bolted on a new set of tires, and then he went to the top of the timesheets. Look at this battle for the fourth position. Alex LeBay on the inside. Caden Lofsevich up on the high side. He's getting that nice run on the outside. We haven't seen this the entire race so far in the second 100. The outside groove has not really been a place where you can make a lot of progress, but right now it looks to be great. Well, things have started to change here as far as the track goes. We started the evening's festivities, and the track was completely covered in sunshine. So lots of track temperature. Now most of it is in shadow as the sun starts to set. So that'll cool the track temperatures down. Not only is Lasovic battling with Alex LeBay for position, he's looking to get a nose to the outside of Kevin Lacroix as well. As I say that, of course, he loses half a car length. But what a great side-by-side -side duel between two of our best. Noel Dowler and Donald Teach in there as well in the 5 and the 22 as their side-by-side -side behind that LeBay Lasovic battle. And race leader DJ Cannington wants to look in his mirror and see two wide racing behind him all night long. These guys are using up their brakes, they're using up their tires, and Kennington is just out in front on cruise control. Alex Tagliani has a different set of cards dealt to him in this second race with no fenders and really not a bumper. And we got caution up because of this up in turn number four. Armani Williams and Jason Hankowicz get together. Looks like both able to drive away or money Williams. The leaders have already gone around, so he will be scored a lap down. Yeah, he'll, you've got to, you fall in line wherever you regain caution speed. So Armani Williams will drop down in line as he can Admiral on the Swan Rentals machine, getting a chassis adjustment and problems for Tej. Tej in the 22, you see the crew going under the hood of that Dodge Challenger. Now you saw water boiling out the overflow in race number one. So they're just checking to make sure that things are running cool. Tej was a little bit worried about the temperature of the engine on that one. You know, and better safe than sorry. He was having a good run. He can still come back from where he's going to be. You can't come back from a blown engine, Dave. <laughs> That's true. 
So it looks like the crew is happy with what they saw, and the 22 will rejoin at the tail of the field. I'm Dave Bradley. Joined with me up in the booth is Adam Ross. Todd Lewis is patrolling the pits for us here today in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, as we prepare for a re restart nearing the halfway point. We're 47 laps in the books. DJ Kennington and Gary Clute will lead it back to green. I really would have liked to have stayed on board the 74 for that restart just to watch the 17 drive away and how he gets on it. My goodness, they're stacked up. Clute had trouble up on the outside, and that bunched the field in behind. How we got through that without major incident, I'll never know. And again, Alex Tagliani is driving with zero margin for error. If he hits anything with the front of that car, that's a radiator gone. Well, they do have a little bit of a bumper there, but it's really not much. So Tagliani, who's normally an aggressive driver in the NASCAR Pinty Series, will really have to check his emotions and pick and choose the places he wants to make a pass. Well, he's picking and choosing right now. He just moved up to fourth. And we'll be hitting the halfway point this time past the start-finish line. DJ Kennington continues to lead Alex Slipper, uh, sorry, Kevin Lacroix in the 76 of Keaton Lapsovich. But your points leader coming into this event was Kevin Lacroix, and he's having a great run here in the second of twin 100s. Give a little bumper loving to DJ Kennington through turn number four. Now he'll drive down into turn one. He'll get the edge on the inside. Both these drivers are so hungry for a win. DJ Kennington has been itching for a race victory for so many years, and Kevin Lacroix just wants to show what he can do on the ovals as he got a little bit hard on the gas and wiggled the back end of the number 74. You know, DJ said they were going to make some adjustments, make the car faster for this second round. He's running a curious line to me. He's moved up the racetrack about three quarters of a groove. That's leaving the door open for Lacroix. That car may have tightened up on him. That's what you normally do if the car gets a little bit tight. You don't want to pinch it down. You try and let it float up the racetrack so you can maintain as much speed as you can. There's a battle for six spot. Noel Dowler and Alex LeBay. I just can't believe we're well into the second half of this race already. Now we're talking about laps winding down when it feels like it just started. Anthony Simone is on quick flash with the number 95. And his Dodge Challenger, now as we look back out, the back end of the 32 of Alex LeVay, he's right there as well. Good run for Simone. Simone's having a great run. Alex LeVay has to be wondering a little bit what the heck went on as we ride on board with Andrew Ranger. Ranger chasing the Spectra Premium 04 of J.F. Dumoulin. Back up at the front run. The Lacroix to the inside of T.J. Kennington. And Lacroix able to draw alongside it, just getting the power down to be able to make that move. That's the difference. D.J. up on the outside can smoothly accelerate off the corner. Easing it in, down on the inside for the 74 is Kevin Lacroix. D.J. Kennington again able to carry that momentum up on the outside. And whether Caden Lapsovich is just biding his time or letting these two try to settle it, maybe make a mistake. Lapsovich hey, got problems. Dowler in the 18. Oh, Alex Tagliani making contact in turn number one. Both going for a spin, and we're back under caution. Dowler had a big run down into the corner, just couldn't hang on to it. Let's have another look. They come through turn four. Little bit of contact between Dowler and Tagley. Uh, a lot lower. of contact. <laughs> oh, it looks like Dowler caught the grass going in one. Well, he went in back end first. As the back end got around from him, then all you can do is chase it. He's down on pit road with a fire in the right front. And you can see the exhaust pipes all crunched up on the back end of the number five. So the crew has some work to do. We'll take a quick break with 40 laps to go. Welcome back to Wine Group Raceway in Saskatoon. Second of the 100 lap feature races tonight. Noel Dowler behind the wall. They stopped on pit road briefly, assessed the damage. It's more severe than they thought. Now they're gonna have to make some repairs behind the wall of brake lines, of brake ductwork damage. Tough break for Noel Dowler, who said he had a lot of fun and a great race in the first one. That's Noel's brother, Adam Dowler, in the black fire suit top, assessing the damage. I believe I heard him say they need a brake line. And problems on the 04 of JF Dumoulin as well. We're hearing fuel pump issues on his Dodge Challenger, so it looks like his night may end early in the Spectra Premium Back Dodge. He was the hard charger in the first 100, gained more positions than anybody. Not so much in the second 100, but we've got a race to settle. 31 laps to go. 
DJ Kennington and Kevin Lacroix. This time, Kennington on the inside. Kevin Lacroix up on the outside. Lacroix has been quicker than the 17, 17 for the last number of laps. Can he make it step by stick up high? And I can see right now why Kennington was running the outside. That car just does not look stable trying to run the bottom. Kevin Lacroix takes the lead. Now Gary Clute in DJ's backup car going around on the outside. And look who's right there as well. The 76 of Caden Lapsovich. Clute looking to mount a challenge on your race leader in the bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge. Kevin Lacroix. Oh, Lacroix slides up the racetrack in turn one. DJ Kennington, that car looks so angry for two laps. Now he's making a pass for the lead once again. Side by side for the race lead. Contact between Kennington and Lacroix. Once again, both stay straight down the front straightaway. And that's just a little bit of short track rubbing. No cars really get upset. Just both drivers finding the limit. DJ finding a little more than the limit as he rubs up the side of Lacroix. Almost a little. Excuse me, I just need you here for a little help, please, as he pushes Lacroix off the racetrack. But Caden Lapsovich right there and ready to pounce. And Lapsovich, to me, in this 100-lap race, doesn't look like he's overworked the car for even a single lap. He's just been following someone the whole race. He'll pick up a position when the opportunity arises. As you look at that 76, there's barely a mark on that race car. I was just going to say a very, very clean race car. Looking at the lap times in race number one, he was the fastest car on the track for the last 20 laps of the first 100 lapper. And now he moves to the inside. Kate Lapsovich, the defending series champion, looking for the lead. They battle with 25 laps to go in this 100-lap feature event. Lapsovich comes off the bottom of the racetrack just a little bit to battle with Kennington. Winner of race number one, the Can-Am Ford Fusion 32 of Alex LeBay, looking to move up into third in a battle with the 74 of Lacroix. And remember, LeBay had fallen out of the top five, so he's fighting his way back towards the front. These two drivers fighting their way at the front of this field. It's hard to complete a pass. Lapsovich on the inside gets the upper hand, then DJ Kennington, the grizzled veteran, up on the outside, gets momentum and keeps hold of that lead. Look at the front ends of these race cars. They jump up coming off the corner, they get on the gas, and they jump back down onto the racetrack going into the corner, almost as though they're synchronized around the track. Still side by side, so close between Caden Lapsovich and DJ Kennington. Oh, Kennington slid up the racetrack a little bit. He lost the front end of the car and slid up. Caden Lapsovich gained about half a car length. And that appears to be all Caden Lapsovich needed as he's going to be able to maybe take a little extra space in the bottom groove and force a 17 high. As of right now, it's been a very, very clean race at the front of the field between those two. And he has yet to clear Kennington. DJ fighting back, and Caden did the smart thing. Don't slide up in front of a veteran like DJ Kennington. He'll stay right there, and it'll be a wild ride. Let's make this a three-car battle for the lead now as the 32 of Alex LeVay, fresh off a of victory already this evening, is looking for more here in race number two. still hasn't cleared the 17. Finally, now he could come up to the wall in front of DJ, and Kate Lasevich has the lead. So a little bit further back, the number 47 of LP Jubilee, the Weather Tech Dodge, now up inside the top five. That's a solid points run for him in this second 100-lapper battle for second place on the racetrack now between Kennington and LeBay, and into lap traffic. And Kennington will use Stefan Klim as a pick. The last time in a turn one, Alex LeBay really slid up the racetrack. He'll follow Kennington now right on his back bumper is Kevin Lacroix. That's a veteran move, exactly what TJ Kennington did. Using the lap traffic to his advantage, now he maintains second spot all by himself. And I'll tell you, Caden Lapsovich, oh, trouble. Luke Hocus in the Dodge number 10, and he's got steering problems on the front end of that 10 machine. You see the sparks coming out of the left front corner. 16 laps remain as we're under caution. Here in the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 100s, the second of two 100 lap races. Caden Lapsovich, your leader, will reset the field. We'll come back to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Welcome back to NASCAR Pinty Series Racing on TSN from Wyant Group Raceway in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. We're down to the final throws of the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 100s. 
And it's Caden Lapsovich and DJ Kennington as the field bunches up behind those two, looking for the green flag with just 10 laps to go. And Lapsovich got on it as early as he could in turn number four, trying to get the advantage, not only over Kennington, but to keep Alex LeMay as far behind him as he could. Kennington's going to slot down into second spot as those two go single file. Lacroix on the outside of the 32 of LeBay. Battle for fifth, though, between the 47 of L.B. Dumoulin and the 59 of Gary Clute. Clute is only oval start of the 2017 season. He's given that car a great drive as he closes in on the back bumper of Lacroix. Thankfully for him, Lacroix moves to the bottom. Not so polite anymore as he saw a number of the drivers bumping and nudging, trying to gain a little extra ground, maybe trying to loosen up the car in front as Kevin Lacroix does that to the 32 of Alex LeBay. Oh, Clute sideways into turn three. Up the racetrack he goes. That is going to cost him a number of positions. You saw Donald Teach go through all the way back to 11th now for the 59 of Gary Clute. Knocked him clean out of the top 10. And how about Donald Teach? Pitted because the car was overheating earlier on. Now he's looking to race into the top five. And that 27 of Andrew Ranger wanted to be anything but a race car in race number one. He's doing well as he battles with Teach for a sixth spot. And right behind him is Mark Dilley. That car has failed to finish every previous race before we came to Saskatoon. So great to see Dilley hanging in there. Vaughn and Hill handling race car for the most part today, but the Leland Industry Avenue Auto Parts 02 is doing very, very well inside the top 10 with three laps to go as the leaders cross the stripe that time. Lapsovich by a nose in front of the 17 of DJ Kennington. They were very nearly three wide with Teach in the 22, Ranger in the 27, Dilly in the 02. Here comes the veteran DJ Kennington closing in on Lapsovich. Two laps to go and he's almost close enough to get to the back bumper of Caden Lapsovich, but the question is, if he gets there, will he loosen the youngster up to take the win? I gotta believe if he can, he will. It's been so long since he visited Victory Lane. White flag is out. One third of a mile remains for the youngster, Caden Lapsovich, on for turn number two. And he's gaining ground. He gains a car link down the backstretch. One more shot for Kennington. Lapsovich will hold the inside line and keep the 17 back. Give the win to Caden Lapsovich. Kennington and LeBay round out the top three. What a race. Twin 100s, a huge success in Saskatoon as DJ Kennington pulls alongside Caden Lapsovich. Thumbs up between those two drivers and Todd's with a very proud father. Taking a picture of the scoreboard and understandably so. Another year in Saskatoon and another victory. Well, that's just, that's Caden, you know. He makes us all look so good. Uh, the kid just drives it for all it's got and he gets more out of everything than he should, you know. Uh, we're a low-budget team. We're looking for a sponsor, and um, you put your name on that car, and it's going to be shown in the front. So get that kid makes sure of it. He does an awesome job. I couldn't be a more proud father. Go enjoy this one. Have a look at the way this kid celebrates a race win in the NASCAR Pinty Series. A pump of the fist as he goes across the line. It's his fifth NASCAR race win of his short career. He's in victory lane and ready to jump out of this car. Todd? On the podium with a third place result in the first 100 lapper. He is the winner of race number two here at Wide Group Raceway. Winner last year in Saskatoon. Great run in the first race. What did you learn in that first one that you were able to get the victory here in race number two? Give the lab cars some room. Um, this thing was awesome. You know, we, I don't know if we were the quickest there in clean air, but I know if we were behind somebody, we were really good, and I didn't want to be behind anybody coming out of checkered flag, so I had to make my move. Uh, you know, I love racing with DJ, awesome guy to race with. Um, you know, but I can't thank all my sponsors, Ace Services, Ka Springer's Meats, Troy Cove Marine, Cash, Shoal, Epic Race, or not Epic Race, Leaf Racer, just everybody's. I'm a lost for words right now. We're going we're gonna to go make it run at this points battle here. Caden Lapsovich liking it out west. Another victory here in Saskatoon. Awesome. And remember, this was his turning point to start his championship run last year. We'll take a look at the final results. LP Dumoulin coming home with a top five finish. And I know Alex Tagliani doesn't celebrate ninth place results, but given what he had to work with, that is impressive. How about the 28 of Armani Williams coming home in 13th spot? Destiny Klim, Stefan Klim, 16th and 17th in their first starts. Let's go down to 
the top. DJ Kennington with another second place finish, but the uh, emotion on your face says it all. You just want this win so bad. It's been a long time, Todd. I just, uh, it's frustrating. We're so close. Uh, Caden's a great kid, man. Ray McLean there, what a great race. Uh, it's fun when you can race like that. There's some guys in this series you can't do that with, but uh, good kid. I mean, thought I had something for him there in the last five. I could have gotten to his bumper. I might have shooken him up a little bit, but uh, Castro Edge, uh, Mopar, Brian Cathcart, Arc One, Canadian Lennon, MPP, Country Collision, MCM, MIC medals, everybody that helps us. I just want to thank everybody sticking with us. We'll be back in Minner Circle real soon. DJ Kennington getting closer. Well, he's unhappy, but he is getting closer. He's knocking on the door of that race win, but we'll take a look at the NASCAR Pinty Series points. Kevin Lacroix back up on top, but not by much. Two points over Alex LeBay. Caden Lasovich clawing his way a little bit closer. Kennington still within 30. LP Dumoulin 31 points back. They're all still in the ballpark, Dave. One driver has had a great stop here in Saskatoon, standing by with Todd. Todd? Alex LeBay, a winner in race number one. Another podium finish. This is a good points day for you. Yeah, it's an awesome point day, points day for all the can team. I mean, the guys work hard. We got a good cars week in, week out. We got, got our seven top five now in seven races, so I think we're, we're on the good way for sure. And you know, Alex LeBay will be quick in Edmonton as well. There is the podium, and Caden Lapsovich, the big winner here in Saskatoon. Second year in a row, he's taken home a trophy from Saskatoon. Solid run. This NASCAR and TSN race is brought to you by Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. By WeatherTech, the ultimate interior protection for your vehicle. And by Honey Goo from Clean Flow. What in honey of a lube. Caden Lasovich is going to spray the champagne. Don't get any in your mouth, Caden. You're allowed to spray it. You're not allowed to drink it. <laughs> the next race will be another short track from Edmonton International Raceway in the Luxor 300. From the wide Saskatoon racetrack, Wyant Group Raceway, we go to the tight bull ring at Edmonton. It'll be a great show in Wetaskiwin. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.